When you go into the AI tab, you'll see there's over 25 different options for various AI effects. You can turn these on and off, depending on which ones you want to use in any particular event. Let's leave the default settings and start a session. When the session starts, the user will have the option to choose between a standard photo and an AI photo. Let's select the AI photo option. The user will then be able to browse through the various categories of AI effects and will choose one of them for their photo. The user then simply enters their email or phone number and the software will send them their photo when it is ready. No standing around waiting for the AI photo to be processed. If you use Photo Booth Cloud, the software will display a QR code that the user can scan to access their photo without having to enter any information. Now, I'll demonstrate how to customize the AI settings in Social Booth. Clicking on the AI configuration icon will bring up some general settings. Here, you'll see the location of the AI content folder. It defaults to the Assets folder in the Social Booth program directory. Just like other Social Booth asset folders, you can modify the contents here, but it's much better to copy the folder to a different location to make any changes. Inside the AI content folder, you'll see separate folders for each of the individual AI categories. Let's open up one of the folders. Inside, you'll see an icon file and an image folder. This icon corresponds to the icon the user sees in the software. If you want to change the icon, simply replace it with a file with the same size and name. If you want to make changes to the AI photo options in a specific category, you can do that in the Images folder. You can add, delete, and rename images here. The name of the image serves as the AI prompt, so be sure to name the image according to what you want the AI to create. If you go into the configuration settings for a particular AI category, you'll see the option to add a custom title for the category. There's also an option to display the prompts as images or text. The titles for these categories and images can be turned on and off here. Next is the option to allow the user to choose between an AI photo and a regular non-AI photo. Here you can also make custom labels for the two options. And finally, you can tell the software what to do after it takes a photo. If you select Share and Continue, the user will be prompted to either enter their email address, phone number, or scan a QR code. If you select Only Continue, no user input will be displayed, and the final photos will just be saved to the hard drive. In this case, you would need to use Photo Booth connected on a sharing station in order for the user to access their photos away from the booth. Now, let's take a closer look at the AI categories. You'll notice that each category has icons to indicate if it creates a photo or a video. There is also an icon indicating the recommended number of people for each type of shot. The majority of the effects can be categorized as generative AI. Every generative AI photo will be unique as the scene is regenerated for each photo. You've already learned how to customize these generative AI effects in their respective images folder by adding and deleting images. Remember, the name of the image also serves as the prompt for the AI to know what kind of image to generate. Some of the category's names are themselves the prompt, so there isn't an images folder to customize. The AI simply generates a photo based on these specific category names. The next type of effect is face swap. There are several types of face swapping available. You'll see that there are both face swapping photos and face swapping videos. The face swapping effect simply replaces the face in the photo with the face of the user, leaving the rest of the image unchanged. Unlike generative AI, face swapping produces the exact same photo every time, only with a different face. Once again, you can make your changes to this category in the images folder. When adding your own images, be sure to make them 1800 by 1200 pixels, as these are the actual images that will be used in the output. Friend Swap this is a unique effect that will swap the faces of the people in the photo onto each other's bodies. Party Swap Party Swap is similar to Friend Swap, except that it swaps faces with a random photo from earlier in the event. Video Face Swap There are several video face swap categories. All of them will replace the face in the video with the face of the user. You can add your own videos to the Custom Videos folder for each category. Be sure to keep your custom videos under 10 seconds, since the processing time for AI videos is much longer than for photos. Singing videos Singing videos are a specialized version of face swap. 
These videos will depict the user singing in the form of a particular character. The original singing videos are created specifically in-house, so there isn't an option to add your own custom videos. Although, you can delete items from the images folder to remove specific videos from that category. Wardrobe The new wardrobe category is basically a virtual dressing room that will change the clothes of the person in the photo. To customize this category, place your images in one of the two folders, tops or dresses. Comedy Roast this is a very fun effect that will make a few good-natured jokes about the people in the photo. There are a few options for the way you want the roast delivered. You can have the text appear on the photo, or you can send it as part of the email or text message. You can also have the roast created in several different languages. As you can see, there are many different ways to incorporate Social Booth's new AI features into your photo booth. We can't wait to see what you will create with them.